Welcome to the Rock as George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 139. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to hit like, follow, or subscribe on the platform that you're listening to us on. You can also check out my work at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com, for exclusive hard rock and metal interviews, live show coverage, and more. My guest for this episode is drummer Sean Drover of the band Withering Scorn. You may remember Sean and his brother Glenn Drover from their days in Megadeth or Eidolon. They've hooked up with Henning Bass of Metalum and Joe DiBiase, formerly of Fate's Warning, to put together Withering Scorn. Their latest album, Prophets of Demise, is out now through Frontiers Music. And here's Sean Drover to tell you more about it. If I knew absolutely nothing about Withering Scorn, how would you describe the band's music to me? Heavy metal. Perfect. I think that sums it up right there. Everybody wants to put everything in a box, right? A little little neat subgenre box. To me, it's, you know, it's, it's metal. It has elements of different things, but so did Judas Priest and Maiden and Dio and Black Sabbath. They all out had different speeds of songs and types of songs. They're still metal, right? Absolutely. That's how I look at it. So now uh, in the group, it's yourself, your brother, Glenn. You have Henning Bass of Metalium and Joe DiBiase, formerly of Fate's Warning. How did you bring Henning and Joe into the band? Uh, Henning and Joe, Glenn did a record. He did a solo record, kind of a solo record, quote unquote. He just had some bunch of different singers and musicians, just kind of a fun record he did called Walls of Blood which is a really heavy record. And uh, uh, Joe played on uh, two songs, played bass on two songs on his record. Henning sang on two songs on, on Glenn's record. And that's kind of how that um, relationship kind of started. So really with the, when the pandemic started and the whole industry was shut down, basically we're all shut down from work. Well, my brother just kind of, you know, Hey, why don't we start doing a new record? Well, you know, and see what happens. Like, well, who do we want to, who do we want to play bass and sing? And, you know, and, and uh, the first name we, we thought of was Joe because, you know, he's up in Connecticut, you know, he's up Northeast, not, not too far from you. And um, he's a great bass player. I mean, it's, you know, just being at Fate's Warning for all playing on those, all those classic records and stuff. It was a kind of a no brainer. And uh, so Joe was into it. And then we asked Henning and uh, he's over in Germany. You know, he's set up as well with, with pro tools and stuff. You got to make something real important to, I'll bring up real quick is that, Again, during the pandemic, no one was going in the record in a recording studio, and you know, as a band or even as individual individuals, to record. So it was important to have people who were set up at home with Pro Tools, who you know were enabled to record their tracks. So that was a bonus as well, having Joe and, and Heading. You know, so we're all kind of self-contained in that way. We all have Pro Tools setups and stuff. So it made that process a lot easier than it would have been you know, had somebody not had Pro Tools. So, you know, that's kind of, so that's basically in a nutshell, how we got uh, Joe and Henning was really because of the relationship that both of them played on Glenn's previous record. So it worked out great. Your new album by Withering Scorn is Prophets of Demise. It came out on July 7th through Frontiers Music. Um, were you and Glenn the primary songwriters or did everybody have a hand in putting this together? I wrote I wrote most of the record. And again, um, you know, we, Glenn and I had already started the process before even before we asked Joe and asked Henning. You know, we just started getting some ideas together, some musical ideas, which is what we did in the past with our our previous band, Eidolon, back in the 90s and uh, early 2000s. It was same, really the same kind of process where Glenn owns a recording studio. So he does all the engineering work and all the production and all the mixing. So that's that's a big job unto itself. So way earlier on in life we made a decision you know say look i want to help let me write most of the the music and write most of the lyrics which is what i did on this record as well and that way it kind of evens uh evens out the workload a little bit so um having said that going forward when we do the next record whenever that is uh you know i've already talked to joe about being involved with the songwriting process you know any ideas he has you know, let's start swapping ideas and stuff because I want everybody to be involved as much as they want to be, you know. So I didn't do most of the writing because I had to, wanted to do it or it was just kind of the way it worked out because it was only me and Glenn to start. So 
but the next record, you know, I've already talked, like I said, I talked to Joe and he's, he's already into, you know, giving some ideas and, and some insight about stuff that I might write, we might, you know, interject. So that's kind of exciting into itself, really. And I think it's great you're already talking about the second album because this album is fantastic. It's got that classic metal sound. That's what drew me to it. I was I thought it was really good. I'm like, who are these guys? And as I dig deeper, I find out it's you, your brother, and and the other two guys. And, and I'm like, wow, no wonder it's this good. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, it was for in terms of writing the record. I mean, if look, if I wanted to write a couple of speed metal songs. I would have done it, you know. I was, I, I just wrote a batch of songs, you know, and it, you know, some are fast, some are slow, some are more doomy and kind of with a lot of dynamics in it. It's always been like that for me. For me, as long as it follows or falls in, under the category of heavy metal, you know, without pushing the parameters, getting, you know, polka music or country or whatever, you know, you know, we, I always keep it metal and, and, but I, I try to stretch it as far as I can in terms of, like, like I said, if I wanted to write, couple of speed bell tunes where i wanted to write some really slow doomy stuff i have no problem doing it whatsoever so because it's up to me it's all heavy metal so there you go let's talk about kind of what inspired the songs you got three singles out now let's talk about prophets of demise what what inspired the lyrics on that particular song oh dear i mean it's just you know it's just another sinister kind of set of lyrics where you know basically the prophets of demise tell, you know, tell the people, you know, follow us or follow me, you know, we, you know, we are the way we'll take you to the promised land, blah, blah, blah. And of course it ends up that they end up killing them all. So S typical Sean Drover, hate filled, heavy metal lyrics, you know, it's nothing, you know, of course it's most of the stuff I write is fantasy based. There's, there's some songs that are, uh, have a, a line of truth to them or whatever, but most of the stuff I write certainly is, is based on, you know, fictional stuff, you know, you know, metal stuff, you know, I can't write, I can't write a song about blue skies and, and, you know, pretty flowers and stuff. I just, I just can't do it. It doesn't fit into the music. You know, it's all part of the package. The way I look at it. like the music's heavy, the lyrics should be heavy too. It should kind of fit into it's all one nice little evil package. <laughs> so in keeping with the fantasy theme, what is sort of the inspiration for dark reflections? Well, Dark Reflections uh, is more reality based. That song is about um, overcoming uh, addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or there wasn't anything sp specific uh, necessarily, just the whole uh, realm sphere of, of addiction and what that entails, you know, how it takes over your life and it can destroy your life. And, you know, why can't you see your dark reflection? Can't you see in a mirror what you, what you are becoming? Uh, but ironically, Unlike most of my songs, that has a kind of a happy ending to where the person actually overcomes it and, and changes uh, their life uh, and goes on to great things. So they beat it, you know, in, in the song where most of my lyrics, it doesn't go like that at all. So, I mean, maybe that's the, the difference between fantasy stuff and something that's based a, a little more uh, reality based. So I try to put a little bit of a, a twist of uh, positivity at the end of the song. And, and funny enough, that song seems to be, I've been getting a lot of good feedback with the lyrical content of that song. Um, that song is, has probably three or four more times uh, hits on YouTube. It has like a hundred and whatever it is now, 110,000 hits within, you know, six weeks or, what, or whatever it was. So for some reason, that song is, is uh, caught a little bit more of a nerve with, with people, which, which is great. So. But yeah, that song is, is ba based on uh, over overcoming uh, addiction. More, you know, more so. There's lots of kinds of addiction, of course, but specifically drug and alcohol addiction. That's kind of what that song is is based on. And the third single you have out is "Dethroned." If you want to talk a little bit about that song, uh, another fictional bad ending song. The fault of man, and just how man is just kind of screwed everything up and it you know it's just that kind of a thing it's not um it's nothing in, nothing really specific like the first two so i mean that's again you know it has a it's a sinister lyric based song with with a with a bad ending <laughs> kind of like a friday the 13th movie you know everybody's gonna die so which i love so you know you're releasing the album through frontiers music this isn't the typical sound that frontiers puts out so how'd you end up signing with the label 
Well, I think that's great because, you know, again, again, you know, everybody wants to put everything in this, you know, like you suggest, you know, Frontiers only puts out this kind of music. Well, that, evidently that's not really the case uh, because our records is a very heavy metal record. It's, you know, but that, of course, like you say, there's a lot of um, AOR rock and, and uh, that kind of thing on their label, which is great, you know, but, and they have some uh, bands from the past that they've kind of resurrected and, and uh, are releasing a winger and stuff, have, having new releases and stuff. And, and, you know, so I think they're kind of maybe trying to expand a little bit. I, I'm, I'm guessing here, you know, certainly having a band like us with our pedigree, it's all based on, you know, total, you know, I was in Megadeth, which was a, a thrash band and Fates Warning was a progressive metal band. So, which really doesn't necessarily fit under the, the tier of what uh, Frontiers has, has put out in the past. But I, like I said, I think that's a great thing having us on there as, as showing people, hey, we're not just a one trick pony here. We're doing other things as well. So, you know, we've had a good relationship with them and, and they've been doing a really good job so far. So, you know, I can't complain. You know, they love the, you know, end of story. They love the record when they heard it. And that's a great thing, having a team of people behind you who, who love the music first off. You know what I mean? Instead of just saying, oh, here's a band, put them out, whatever. You know, these guys really do care about about uh, uh, the record that we presented to them. So, you know, so far it's worked out really well. I, I, I have to say they've been uh, Frontiers has been doing a really good job. Is Withering Scorn going to stay a studio project? Or are you going to try to do some live shows in the future? Live shows are, are tricky right now because I'm sure you're aware a lot of bands uh, have canceled tours, going especially going to Europe, which is where... Uh, if anything, you know, if we were to play any kind of festivals in the future, I would think that it would be over in Europe, you know, over Valken Festival in Germany or something like that. There's tons of great festivals over there, Sweden Rock, that kind of thing, you know. Um, being that we're a brand new band and most people aren't even aware of who we are yet, uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. I don't think it's financially feasible for us to even uh, take on something like that being or being... Um, thinking that that could be a, a great success going over there where no one knows who the hell you are yet. So, you know, we're doing this kind of thing. Obviously we're promoting the record as much as, 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 uh, as we can. And uh, so far the reviews of this record have been really, really great. So that's a good, that's a good start for us. You know, it's better than everybody saying your record sucks. So, you know, again, not that that, it doesn't bug me when, if somebody thinks my, our record sucks, it doesn't bug me at all because by and large, they probably don't like that kind of music anyway. So that doesn't bug me, but the fact that we've had almost right across the board um, really good reviews and really good response um, from uh, people such as yourself you know, doing what you do and as well as fans chiming in. I had a guy from Poland yesterday just chime in on my Instagram, just sent a picture of the CD saying, hey, greens from Poland, love your record. So that's a, that's a nice thing to see, you know. Um, so I would say we're in a holding pattern in, in uh, terms of any kind of touring because it's – there's just too much unknown. Too many people uh, have canceled tours uh, because of lack of finance or the costs uh, in Europe. You know, busing, petrol is, is just through the roof. Cr the crew people, you know, and everybody in the grandmother is on tour right now. So even crew people are hard to find. But you know what I mean? So, you know, I think we're kind of in a holding pattern and see how the record is, is really received. And if there's opportunities um, down the road, then we'll we'll. Uh, talk about it then but for now we're we're staying busy promoting the record and and uh, it won't be too long in the future where we're going to start all start getting ideas together uh for the next one so but right now we're focusing on this record and promoting it was there something that spawned the band name withering scorn or was it just the most evil sinister thing you could think of no dude that was the hardest part of of, of this whole band was coming up with a stupid band name i mean we had lists, dude. Joe had, he would send 20 names, you know, and two of us would like it or three of us would like it. And one guy, no, I don't like it at all. Or, or we all agree upon it. And then we look it up, some bands already got it. So it's like, it was a really tedious task coming up. I mean, you know, Jesus, man. I mean, all the, all the good names were taken, you know, last time I checked Iron Maiden was taken. So we couldn't use that. Led Zeppelin was taken. We could, you know, no, I mean, it was, you know, um, it was really difficult to come up with a band that a name that all four of us liked. And finally I came up, I came up with withering scorn, a term that I heard years ago on, t on television that somehow popped in my head. And uh, 
the guy said, I said, look, nobody's got the name. It's kind of a little bit different, you know, but it's certainly metal sounding and stuff. They're like, yeah, it sounds good, you know. It was almost getting to be the 11th hour. Like, look, guys, we need to come up with a freaking name here, you know. We call it, We can call the band Chocolate Ice Cream for all I give a shit. That's like, let's just get a freaking name for the band, you know. So anyway, we all we all seem to like this name. So it's uh, that's what we're using. If the names, if the cool names aren't taken by bands, they're taken by craft beer. Right. Exactly. Right. There you go. Which that whole that's a whole other conversation. Why not resurrect the Edelon name? That's sort of the thing of Frontiers music is kind of bringing back bands that have been dormant for a while. So why not use Edelon? Yeah. Yeah. The Eidolon stuff. Um, I think we just wanted to kind of move forward and do something new. I mean, really, I mean, Eidolon is me and my brother writing the music. This band so far is me and my brother writing the music. So sure, you could have an argument there say why don't you just call it Eidolon but I think it's just out of respect for Joe and Henning wanting to call it something you know you know let's do something new you know and, and um, have just a different again that's that band was never that successful in the first place at all now that band served a great purpose for Glenn and myself getting into Megadeth because David was recommended listening to that one of our records um and he did, and he liked Glenn's playing, and and heard me play, and and you know we both got into the band that way. So it served a greater purpose, but I just didn't, I didn't want to go backwards, or like I said, out of respect uh, for Joe and Henning, I don't think they'd want to be in something that we did 25 years ago that was really never that successful to begin with. So we wanted to start fresh and and do something new, but of course there's musical similarities because I'm writing it. And, you know, Glenn and I are, are doing the writing. So, you know, for me, it's 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 just a name. And but we wanted to start fresh, really. So outside of songwriting and playing the drums, from what I understand, you're a pretty good golfer. Yeah, I'm hard. I'm I don't, I don't know what you call a pretty good golfer compared to the pros. I'm not. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm a fair golfer. Certainly, I've been playing since um, I was nine, eight, eight, eight years old. Yeah, my father cut down a set of irons and gave me a set of irons as a youngster. And I became obsessed with it pretty, pretty quick. I mean, not growing up as a teenager, I, you know, I didn't want to be a drummer. I wanted to be a PGA professional, but that obviously wasn't in the cards, you know? Um, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I play as much as I can and I love it, you know, to this day, I've been playing now for shit. Almost 50 years, 40, 49 years I've been playing golf. So, you know, I love it as much now as I as I did when I was a child. So it's it's a great passion of mine, and I love watching it on television. And you know, it just uh, it's just a lot of fun for me to play. You know, that's that's five hours of fun going out with some friends and, and smashing the ball around. That's that's great fun for me. So it's a, a huge passion that I have for sure. I know you have Withering Scorn to promote right now, but do you work with any other acts? I know you had Active Defiance at one time, and. 2017 and it seems every musician's kind of got their hand in something else no the answer is no really i, I mean uh, act of defiance uh really broke up because um chris broderick uh, got an offer to join a, a much bigger band called in flames which is a great band out of sweden they've been around for at least 25 years now i believe so you know that was a good opportunity for him and uh that was this is right before the pandemic it's like 2018 if i remember right so um, I was all for it. I, I was, we were all extremely supportive of, of him doing that. And it was certainly a smart decision on his part. Um, and then really the pandemic hit not too far after that. You know, obviously he took a break between 2018 and pandemic, but you know, we're, I was just kind of in a lull musically, wasn't really doing anything. And, and, uh, again, once the pandemic hit, that's when my brother kind of reached out and said, Hey, you know, Let's let's get something going here. It's right like batch of songs and like we did back in the back in the day and and have some fun. So that's that's exactly what we did. And it came out absolutely fantastic. Those are all the questions I have for you today, Sean. The new album, Withering Scorn, Prophets of Demise, out now. Uh, you should be very proud of it. I, I I I'm looking forward to what's next from you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Once again, I want to thank Sean Drover of Withering Scorn for coming on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out their latest album, Prophets of Demise, out now on Frontiers Music. 
head over to your favorite music streaming platform. Take a listen to the album. If you like what you hear, buy a physical copy. Support the artist. For all things Withering Scorn, head over to their official Facebook page slash Withering Scorn. I also want to thank John Freeman of Freeman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. Discover your next favorite artist on the Rock is George podcast.